What is up guys and welcome back. Okay, this guide is going to be a full guide to the Ultima weapon. This is including and not limited to the chests in Caribbean and Final World with Oricalca, the buying and posting of the postcards, the Frozen Slider game, the Fantastic Seven games, and of course the Omega weapon defeating the gummy ship there. Now to unlock the blueprint for the actual Omega weapon, you need to collect all 58 of the synthesis items um, ingredients. And this is also going to be in the guide, but I'm going to do it very differently. And I'm going to explain that a little bit later. The only thing that's not in this guide, guys, is the Lucky Emblem locations. This is a almost an hour long video and it wouldn't have made sense putting it on the end of this one. But it is in the description along with full timestamps to absolutely everything you need to find within this guide. So we're going to kick things off straight away and we're going to head to the Caribbean. And we're going to grab the first Oricolcum chest. And then we're going to head to Final World and grab that one. With the uh, Fantastic 7 games, uh, you have to actually get high scores with those. A lot of videos just show you completing them. But you actually have to get high scores. And I've also got all of those included in this guide. And again, timestamps down below. Now, I've collected this before, but it will be right there. All right, we're going to head to Final World. Grab this one. This is part of the storyline, so no stress. Nice. Right, so from there we head to Twilight Town and we do the postcard thing. Simply put, you have to buy something and sometimes they'll give you a postcard or prize postcard. You post said postcard and they give you something. Now, this is not going to happen all the time. And it doesn't matter if you buy one thing or 20. What I would normally do is maybe buy 20 worth of prize postcards, save your game, post all 20. If you don't get it, simply load. So you can do that. But in the end, you will get the Oricolcom Plus. There she is. Okay, we're going to jump straight into the Frozen Slider game now. This was fairly difficult, uh, especially the, the later ones. Now you can get several of them on single runs, which I do do, I think, just once. Here. Um. But you can access the game here. Now it might look quite daunting the first time, but we're going to have some landmarks set up here. The first one being this first jump. After this jump, you can either go left, straight or right. right. No, nope, straight this time. And that's what you're after, the treasures. Now you might collect them in different orders. But just to just show you exactly where they are. And we're off. All right, so over the first jump, we're going to head left this time. Now this is the left cave, and we're going to head straight down to the left again. And there should be another cave just over here. Yeah? And there it is right there. Okay, third one. First jump. All right. We're going to go straight. I think the most difficult one is landing in the on the mountain top. I think it's number six or seven. Damn, that can be difficult. Okay, we're going to head straight to the left-hand side. Or hardly straight if we're going left. But stick to the left, and you should run straight into it. Is. Okay, starting a bit further down the hill now. Going for the fourth one. All right. This time we do head to the right. And you stick to the right and you should hit the cave. And this is another landmark. The right cave. And you will get to know these paths fairly well. Okay, we're going to go for the rail. Yeah, one of them you have to land on top of that mountain and go all the way to the bottom. 
But uh, there is a little strategy I like to do, and that's to intentionally hit trees so you slow down. This can be very beneficial to you. And there is number four. Okay, first jump, right again. Bit of a fail there. But it matters not. Okay, this is the one. Now these trees I was actually aiming for, not that one though, but once I saw it, and there is number five. Off to the right again. And I think we stick right, yep. Wow. Yeah, dude. Okay, we're gonna skip the rail this time. And go to this All jump. Right. And now we go for the rail. No, we don't go for the rail. We go off the right hand side. And this is gonna be the twin boobs. Landmark, as it came to be known to myself. And there is number six. Twin Boob Rock. Okay, now this is when I get seven and nine, as you can see. And it was accidentally, but uh, I mean, you might as well go for it. Okay, first jump. Off we go to the right. Again, just can't seem to get that corner. Gotta start pulling a lot sooner, I feel. Oh yeah! Head for the second rail. And I think this one is right down the bottom. This was very difficult. I had to try and hit these trees on the right hand side here to slow down and then just scan the forest ahead of you. Eventually I saw it. If you follow that rail, it's going to be just on the ridge. Again, not ideal. And this is how I, I had to do it, because I just couldn't pull in here fast enough. Probably should have gone down one level. But uh, carrying on from there. Hit anywhere down the bottom. Doesn't matter which one you go on. And then just go all the way to the right hand side. This one's accessible from all angles. And then on the right hand side again, we're going to grab number nine. Yes. Here we go. And we're off. Okay, second last one. I know it says eight, but because we got both those other ones, it's going to be labeled like this. Just so people in the description can oh, jump yeah. to number eight if they want to. Okay, over the first jump, we're going to head to the left. And sticking left. Through the left cave and the left jump. This one's going to be a blue rail hidden amongst the trees here. Once you hit that rail, you're good. Just at the bottom of this, it should be. There we go. And smack. Okay, last one, number 10. This one you can go rail to rail from the start. 
takes you to the same spot right here anyway. Just prior to the right cave. Yeah, looks like I learned how to take the corner by number 10. Okay, we're going to go down the center of this one, as you can see. It's quite a tricky uh, position, this one. Which is why, you, again, it's a good idea to hit the wall or something to slow yourself down. Okay, we want to start peeling to the right now. This is when I wanted to hit a tree, just to see if I could see the openings to these caves. As you can see, there's a couple of entrances. You want to take the far right one. And then again, you can hit the wall if you wanted to on the way out. Because over here, you've got to pull just up to the left-hand side as you exit the cave. And you miss this little part over here, and it's gone. Now, yeah, you could get there sticking to the left. Most definitely could, but it's going to be sitting right there. Alright, that puts this mini game behind us. And you will grab the Oracle Com Plus right here. Okay, we are going to go straight into the Flan games now. Now this is when you need high scores, and the high scores are going to be in the description. Check that out if you want to. Right, so the first one's going to be in Olympus, and this is going to be a shield slider game. Okay, for this one you're going to need 20,000 score. Aim for the red arrows if you can. Maintain your speed. I very seldom really got those first four guys. If you don't get those first four, then you won't get any of these. You have to do the first part perfectly. From now onwards, it doesn't really matter if you mess up. Just keep going. If there's one bit of advice I can give, on this corner right here, pull left. Always hit that wall every time. So other than that, just practice makes perfect with this. It didn't take too long to get it, but it can be irritating. Or difficult, should I say. Coming up on 20k, I thought I'd mess that up there. Just go for the arrows each time. And you can also go behind the statue here, and there's quite a few of them. Quite sure what happened there, but I uh, went shooting off to the right. Didn't see an arrow. There we go, 21. I will take it, sir. Now remember, he has to jump up and down and also give you a skill for it to have counted. If you don't get either of those, then you didn't actually get the score. Next up, Toy Box. Straight up to the rest area, and we're going to grab the next one right here. Strawberry Flan. The idea is, you guessed it, just collect them without getting hit. Even if you do get hit, you will still get score. I wasn't quite sure how the scoring worked because um, once you watch something after recording it, then you know you're focusing on different things like the scores and stuff like that. And for some of the times, you just don't get any score when they hop on. I'm not sure if there's a, let's say I've got 20 on there. If they six get knocked off, I won't get score for the next six or something. Maybe I don't know. Just constantly use your boost, and you should get this no problem. This one is going to be 18,000 minimum score. Close now.
As you can see, I'm piling them on top there and only got score for maybe half of them. Don't know. Tell me in the description if you know what's cutting there. But there it is. 18, I will have it. Right, no need for you to see the rest. We're going to head to the next one. Okay, Kingdom of Corona. Yeah. And on this one you need 24,000 score. But um, once you know what to do, this will be one of the easiest ones you will do. You have to get an excellent picture for each one. And I'm going to show you exactly which ones you should get and what order to get them in. Because some of them are not really time based, but if you kind of go towards the area they are, they will start doing the action. And some of them is only one action wonders. Okay, 24k. Now, ignore the first guy. We're going to go straight up to these guys in the tree here, because if you run underneath them at a later stage, then they will jump down and you might not be ready. So let's get them out of the way. There's no time limit with this. Let's see. As the dust settles, snap it. I did it on the end of his movement, but uh, I'm pretty sure you could take it any time there. This one was a Let's bit more see. tricky. Aim for the butterfly up there. Let's and see. if you unzoom your camera and zoom in again, there's more chance of him starting his action. There it comes. Wait for him to stop. Snap it. And this one actually plays with birds. But uh, I've never actually been at the right time to see it. Because you'll get more score for these guys up here. Now you need to wait until the third act, if you will. So as you can see, not all of them are posing. This time they all do present, but bad timing. Well, I am hungrier now. They do look delicious. Okay, as you can see, all of them, same time, done. 16k and counting. Next ones are going to be incredibly easy, if those were considered difficult. Same one as before. Let's see. If he's in the air, I don't think he does for me, but... Uh, if he floats up again, wait for him to pause in the air and then snap it. There it goes. Let's see. Shoot. Just to reiterate, guys, there is a timeline in the description to absolutely everything in this guide. So consult that for your more particular needs. You guessed it, the same as before. Let's see. Alright, getting there. Now this one is going to be a whole lot of animals. Let's see. Well, three. Let's wait for the pose and shoot. There we have it, 26. 24 was needed. Thank you very much. Heading on to the next one. Right, Monstropolis. This one, I would probably say for me, was the most difficult. Just because the main big guy that jumps on you is quite erratic. And you don't quite know how long he's going to stay in the air for. But there are some strategies you can use to definitely help you on the way. Be sure to hit those boxes on the right for some lightning stones. But after that... What's that over there? and the Mickey emblem, obviously, in the distance. So for this one, you want to take Hero's Origin, so you can activate the shield skill, and then activate your chariot. And that is going to rain down hell on these guys, and will definitely boost your score. So I've set everything to the triangle button, so all I have to do is either push L1 in triangle, or L1 down in triangle, so it's all going to be the ones that I need, as in the ether and Thundergo and stuff like that. Although I do kind of mess up in the middle where I got my all my things mixed up. But I got there in the end. So at the start, 
I like to use Aerogap because it actually groups them up sometimes, making it easy to kill. So always keep him in sight. It's the best advice you can do. And if he starts flying, you can double jump away. It's not always going to be the case. Okay, so now you want to finish this skill, but try and get as many as you can. The second you feel he's going to land on you, activate it. And then go to town. Check the score, shoot up there. You need 30,000 for this one. So this won't last very long. Well, for me it didn't. Now you're in super danger because he gets very aggro now. And I couldn't turn the camera and get away at the same time. So jump for freedom. At this point I was trying to get my goddamn lightning to work and I was busy healing myself. Probably would have finished it right there if it didn't mess it up. So I was stressing, running around. I couldn't get the fucking thing to activate. Nice. Eventually I took an ether. I'm like, no. <laughs> Shit. I mean, if I just hit a couple, I would have got it. But he's so quick. The second he jumps in the air, you fucked. He just lands on you. But there we go. On the last hit, I managed to get it. As you can see, I was in the air and he landed on me there. So yeah, that was intense. But good to see the end of it. Okay, next one. Arendelle, we need 25,000 score for this sucker. Go for a bit of a base jump. Just like the guy from Along Came Polly. If you have any idea what I'm talking about. Okay, these guys just hit, kill, destroy, name. You know how it goes. And this one you need, what did I say, 25,000 score for this one. And a good strategy for this as well is to, well, not stand there, John. Is to use the same strategy as before. Get your shield out and then see if you can activate your chariot. And off you go. Yeah, probably should be using lightning a lot. But I feel I knew what I was doing, and I managed to get there in the end. Yeah, I'm doing the same strategy. So kill as many as you can before you activate it, obviously. But of course your lightning and your magic is ten times more powerful. When you're in this form. So 12,000, I was thinking, hmm, maybe. But then they start coming in larger groups. And you can just get so much score. So actually you could say it progressively gets easier. Twenty thousand. Twenty-two. And we're almost on it. Seconds to spare. Or maybe it was a second, I don't know. But there we have it, 25k in the bag. Next up, the Caribbean. Alright, Fort Royal, the watermelon flan. Here you need 29,000k score. And this one was quite difficult, the first couple of attempts. But in the end, there is a strategy you can use, which eventually helped me. I wouldn't say it was quick, but every time you can hit that bell, then do it because the whole idea is to clear out as many as you can, as quickly as you can, so new ones come in their place. So even if there is four or five when you hit the bell, it's going to be worth it. Other than that, it is pretty straightforward. Get to them as quickly as you can. And don't let them get to you, otherwise it's all over. And just keep an eye on that bell. I think this is actually 28,000. Yeah, it's 28,000, not 29. I think I did read somewhere it said 29, but I think I got 28,8 on this, and I still managed to get it. You'll see in the end. Yeah. 
27-6. So eventually get there. I think it's on the last hit. Yep, I just got there. Not exactly the last one, but close enough. Right, another one done. So we're going to head off to the final location, San Francisco. We're going to be, I think it's the South District. Yep, at night. It's a good place to farm uh, Blaze. These guys always have Blaze. Here and the toy boxes. So many. As you will see when I show you shortly with all the item synthesis locations. Okay, here it is. This one did suck as well. But uh, practice makes perfect again with these games. The goal is to jump on their heads until they get all sparkly and then jump on the sparkly heads and then jump to another sparkly head and so on and so forth. Do not jump on the ones that are looking up with their mouths open. This would be a bad life choice. And the role reversal would be complete with the flan eating you. Just try and get a top down view all the time and uh, Jesus cat, my god. Just like any cat I guess, when she wants attention, she wants attention. So yeah, I was saying uh, get a top-down view all the time and uh, don't try and wait to see which one you should jump to next. Always just pull in a direction, any direction, and then when you're up there floating, you can decide which one to go to. Because if you go straight up from a single one like this straight up, then you're not going to make it to the next ones. And the closest one might have his mouth open. So yeah, get a nice hanging top-down view and you should get this in no time. So, and eventually, you will get the dive down like that, and it's all game over. 15,000 is what you need for that one. Alright, guys, it is time to hunt the Omega. The Omega Gummy Ship. And there is the Oracle Com Plus. And in this case, the Plus does not stand for bathroom fixtures, if anyone's watched, uh, what is it, Jurassic Park 3. Okay, heading on to the Omega. Now, I just built a ship with everything I could. With all the most powerful weapons and the most health given to you, which is definitely going to be your mini ships. But this kind of thing, guys, you just got to play around with it. I mean, you just take all the strongest weapons, put them out, and then build from there. And in this case, I went for uh, health and firepower. I took speed completely out of the equation, and it worked pretty damn well. It just takes a long time, obviously, within the space travel when you're not porting to travel around. But head to the graveyard, the Keyblade graveyard, and then embark from there. Now let me just explain where these four enemies are. You see three options in front of you. Go down each one and they're going to lead you straight to one of these enemies guarding this massive ship. So around the edges, around the whole edge, you're going to have this one here, one to the left, one to the right, and then one to the north. And if you can't find which one you have done or haven't done, if you look at the red line going straight up above my ship on the big ship, that means that this boss has been killed. So if you go around in a circle killing the guys on the edges, I'm going to show you a couple of clips now of what they look like. But uh, it is very, very linear. It looks like it, you can just fly everywhere, but you'll find these guys. And they will pop up on your radar very quickly as well. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is the one. But no need to show you the battle. That is just what he looks like. As you can see, this time I did it. I didn't get a little cutscene unlocking the lock for the Omega ship. 
that is because I had killed it already as you can see but then the next one is going to be these small little guys so you're not only looking for large ships you're looking for the kind of Galaxian type battle as well so once you've done that and if it is the first time you will get this cutscene unlocking one of the ways to the Omega just like this now as you can see you get a good view of it now as you can see I've done the right and the south but I need to do the left and the top so all you have to do is follow those marks follow those paths and it'll take you straight to the weapons this one difficult to miss pinky and again just showing you quickly what he looks like but they will be showing up on your map if you get anywhere near them okay so once he's down I know, the ship's not pretty. I've got two different cockpits, but fuck it, whatever works. Okay, so after that one, as you can see, you can get the others. And then there is a secret boss now. So you've got four of those defeated. And then nothing happens. So you go, okay. Now this is when I'm going to speed it up quite a lot. What you want to do from any of the boss locations is head south. <laughs> I say south loosely. Head down. Can't really see the Southern Cross. And there's actually a galaxy constellation on my left there okay so we're gonna head under the ship eventually now I told you that my ship was sluggish so it took me a fucking long time to get there but I'm just gonna show you exactly in the distance where he will pop up and this thing's owning me on the right here it'll pop up any second there it is there so head in that direction as you can see directly underneath this entire massive ship you will see the dragon now again I'm not gonna show the battle just want to show you where he is and I'm going to release a video on strategies for this guy as well. But I mean, I wasn't really planning for it. And I just built the ship for the Omega weapon as much health as I could and much firepower. Leaving movement completely out of it. So, and as well as you can see there, I have the uh, special weapon is my health upgrade. So I can fill my health anytime and it'll recharge as well. Right, then after that, we're going to head to Omega. And this is going to be a balls long trip for me might not be so long for you but to go from the bottom of the ship to the top of the ship took a long time and yes I could have ported but I was just trying to get the location exactly and then I thought nope that's not happening so difficult to miss this fella so strategies for this is to shoot him where it hurts which is pretty much everywhere now you can go for the top section first but it's probably beneficial to take out these smaller guns and those semi bigger guns around the edges otherwise they will just continuously shoot you so with this guys I'm gonna let this play out and I'm gonna catch at the end
And there we have it, Stoke. Oriculka me, please. I do find it strange though that you kind of have to defeat everything to get the most powerful weapon. And I'm not sure if there's a new game plus. Otherwise, uh, there are some secret bosses you can attack, but they're not very difficult, even on proud mode. Okay, guys, here we go. Collector's goals. Now, I'm going to show you the locations to every single synthesis item. Now, how I'm going to do this differently is I'm not going to show you the single location for each one. Rather, a farming run route, which can get you multiple of these guys. Now, again, in the description, guys, you're going to find a link to all of these. Now, they'll just be labeled as timestamps in the video. And within those timestamps, you can read and locate the exact one that you're looking for. Now, some of them are going to be slightly more difficult. And some people say that some can't be farmed. But I did actually farm the Evanescent Crystal the other day. And I'm going to show you a clip of that a little bit later. So before we get into this, guys, also, I've only shown this at the end of the video because you want to go through most of the game to find them naturally. And the ones that you need to actually craft the ultimate weapon are going to be probably in your inventory at this point. And now you can only check the total amounts that you have from the gummy shop workshop because you will hand him your materials every time you speak to him. Therefore, unloading all your crap onto him. So if you speak to them, It'll show you the total amounts of what you have. But for the first one, we're going to head to San Fran. We're going to head some Blaze, along with a whole host of other ones as well. And this is how this is going to happen, guys. I'm going to show you a location like this, show you a battle gate, show you some area. And then I'm not going to show you picking up every crystal. You just have to take my word for it that you can get exactly what the description says you can get right here. And I will show a couple of them, but I'm not going to show every single pickup of every one that's in the list. That will just be too long. We need to make this guide as quick and user-friendly as possible. Okay, so from there, that was the battle gate. Now I'm showing a bit longer of this one, just so I could explain what was cutting. But we're going to head off straight to the next one. Now the locations that I do show you are going to be favoring the gems and crystal locations. Uh, but not all of them. And there are going to be some locations where you can farm so many of the same type. So with this kind of thing, guys, I'm going to let this whole thing play out. Now remember, check the description, look for the ones that, you, that you're searching for, check what timestamp that it's under, and head straight there. No worries at all. All right, to the battle gate we go. Back off. Now, if you're actually after the, the Twilight Crystal on its own, after recording this, I did find another location. I posted a video up yesterday on Betwixt Crystals and Twilight Crystals. You can get more than 10 plus in 10 minutes, and that's also going to be in the description. But I couldn't change it on this video because everything else was already complete. So check the description, guys, for the Twilight Crystal and the Betwixt Crystal, as well as a whole lot of other shards and stuff like that. So this big guy here with the sword actually has the Evanescent Crystal. Now what you have to try and do is defeat him before you defeat all the other enemies. This way you can actually collect what he drops. Now I can't be certain, but I think if you kill him last, you don't actually collect what he drops. You don't, you don't get a notification of what he drops. As you can see right there, a couple of seconds now you'll see the Evanescent Crystal popping up. Very stoked to get that. There it is. Here we go. Thanks for playing. Okay, now we're going to get some frost stuff going. But of course you'll get tons of other stuff as well. So as you see here, we're in the North Mountain of Erendel, And we're going to head down to the Dragons. You probably know the spot already. Now to get the Hungry Stone or Hungry Shard sometimes, you have to attack the Dragon's Tail. And only the tail first. If you kill him first, then it's not going to happen. So if you can, try and go for the tail each time. I'm pretty sure you'll be coming down here a fair amount. As 
as you can see here, the Hungry Stone. Okay, so from there, we're going to head to the Toy Box, I think it is. Yep. Galaxy Toys. And there's going to be a lovely Battle Gate right here. Very handy. Handy, handy. Okay, we're going to head in there and grab a whole lot of stuff. This was my favorite farming spot for Blaze, mainly. But as you can see in the description, there is a shitload of stuff you can get here. And again, I like to use the Wind Power because it does kind of gather everything up for you. And if it doesn't kill the enemies, it kind of puts them into one spot, so you can go in with a full-on attack like so. Yeah, as you can see, they come rolling in thick and fast. The Blaze guys will be the purple guys, and the other ones will have tons of lightning stuff as well. Okay, next farming area. It's going to be in the Caribbean. This is going to be Battlegate as well. We're going to speed this up a lot. We're going to head in here for some lucid items, but like per usual, tons of other stuff you can get in the same area, as you will soon find out. Again, it's probably not your first party here, but um, tons of stuff to farm there. Okay, next up, Moan Stropolis. And this again is going to be the Blaze Rail, which I very much dislike, but there's something you can do here. You can combine the Sinister Farming along with the uh, blaze farming. Now the blaze I would much prefer to get in the toy box in the previous clip I showed you But if you do come here then smack these lightning boxes here, you'll get stones and shards and Then you head turn around and head onto the rail and as you probably know farm these guys for the blaze But um, it's not not somewhere I would go and do now. I'm just showing you as a alternative to the toy box At this point as well, in between the rails, also try and kill these guys because they also drop stuff. And again, like I was saying before, if, you, if you're farming for stuff, you might as well farm it all. Okay, so from there we head through the door and rinse and repeat. Eventually got a blaze stone from there. Okay, the Keyblade Graveyard. There is going to be a gate right here, very handy as well. And here is where you can photograph the demon tower as well. But you're going to find a whole host of stuff in here as well. Okay, from there we're going to head to the forest, as you can see. We're going to head straight to a battle gate as well. But not before taking out some pesky bats. Yeah. And after this one, we're going to head into space and grab the gummy ship ability ones, which is the pretty much adamantite, the Damascus, that kind of stuff. But that's very easy to get. Okay. Get your lucids from here as well as your hungries. And check the description for everything else that you can get in this area. There's only about 10 to 12, 13 areas you actually have to visit to get everything in the game. And that's aside from the ones that you find in chests. I don't have all the chests, but I've definitely got all the items. Okay, so now we're going to head, as you'll see in a second. Keyblade Graveyard again. Now if you embark from there and shoot these rocks. Now, in this area, they're all going to be the same. So just go around here and shoot as many of these rocks as possible. As you can see, in the first couple of hits, you're going to get these items pretty quickly. So check the description below to make sure you collect all of the ones while you're out and about. So we're going to walk around a bit here. Next one is going to be right there, SLW01. And we're going to embark straight from there. And once again, look for the nearest rocks and just start shooting the crap out of them. For the rest of the items. A 
And out here you're looking for the mithril gem, fluorite, damascus, mithril stone, adamantite. And those are going to be scattered everywhere. One more spot I'm going to show you here. And there's a very, very dense population, if you will, of asteroids up here. And you'll get everything you need from this area pretty damn quickly. Okay, next up. We're going to go for the pulse crystals. Now this was quite a difficult farm. In the end, the uh, crafting of these guys was a shitload easier for me. Which I just went ahead and did. After that, head a bit further up and there's going to be another spawn point of enemies just around the corner. If you're lucky enough, you'll still have your power enabled. Sort them out. Pulsing gem. Okay, that is almost going to cover all the materials in the game with some awesome runs now I'm going to show a clip here guys just to remind me and to remind you that if you go check out the synthesis item menu you can craft a lot of these crystals and if you are getting to this near the end of the game you can have a buckload of these things and you should be able to craft them pretty easily if not follow the guide okay the sinister crystal now there was only one spot I found that spawned this or two spots within Monstropolis the first one being with the previous ones I showed you in the description. You can find that. And then the Sinister Crystal will spawn within these guys. I think I need a photo of these guys as well. I'm not sure. But there it is. Sinister Crystal, guys. The last ingredient needed. Right. So from there, find yourself a nice quiet setting. And craft this bastard. And then go find yourself someone else to kill, I guess. Maybe find some secret bosses. We'll have some videos on that soon. And there it is right there. Alright guys, that's going to bring us to the end of this mammoth guide. I really hope you found it informative and it helped you grab this weapon. With all the things that need to be done, it is quite daunting process. Oh so, like as per usual guys, there's plenty more videos on the way. So I want to say thanks for watching and I want to catch you on the next one.